Well, hello YouTube, it's me, Fortnaster, and welcome back to another Film Theory Reaction, and it's uh, The Boiled One Feeds on Your Pain. So yeah, I saw uh, the GT Live where they went over this, and it's another analog horror series. One, I wasn't really able to figure out what it was about, I mean, hopefully they have, but it had something to do with, like, these beings inside TVs, I could break out, and like the boiled one seemed to be the main one in charge or something, and he's looked, well, I mean, boiled, and um, rather, I guess, for lack of a better term, flesh like. Uh, other than like the aesthetic, which I really did like, because it like, you, I felt, I mean, obviously it's analog horror, it's supposed to be creepy, but I liked. Like the first couple of videos, which may or may not have in fact be related, where you like hear it tapping on the inside of the screen and then it breaks through and it gets the person watching. And then there was like a secret message that was backwards. It was... There are not that many videos about it, but the ones that were there confused me a lot. So uh, the fact that, you know, there's actually, there's a theory video out now that will, you know, hopefully explain things a little bit more clearly for me. I, again, I am, I'm very happy that such a thing is occurring. So, yeah, of, I guess, of course, as always, original video is linked in the description if you haven't seen it for some reason. Corner of video will link to my game theory reaction. And, yeah, with all that out of the way, let's get this thing actually started then, shall we? Warning. Warning. Look away. A cognito hazard has been detected in your area. Close oh my god, windows. yeah, that was the thing, like, I, uh, I just remembered. That whole thing, uh, like, apparently in part of the ARG, um, the reason for the blackout, like, in the early 2000s, the big one that basically hit, like, almost the entirety of the East Coast, uh, uh here in the, uh, in North America, um, was because of this thing appearing on TV, so they just cut the power so nobody could see it. Oh god, I completely forgot about that. You will be unable to move. Do not panic. Just shut your eyes and prepare for death. Warning. Prepare Warning. for death. Do not look it directly in the eyes. You cannot run if it sees you. Oh yeah, and wasn't it, it like wasn't it supposed to be almost like your sleep paralysis demon or something? Yeah, there it is. Hello, Internets. Welcome to Film Theory, the show that knows that the true terror in life is an unclicked subscribe button. So, if you spend any time in the same corners of YouTube that I do, you've almost certainly seen this face floating around. Now, you might have seen this and been jump scared, but me? I saw this and thought, new analog horror just dropped? Yo, we gotta go theorize. Yeah, this is from yeah. a video called The Boiled One Phenomenon, created by the YouTube channel Dr. Nowhere. And after seeing it pop up, I asked the team if we could react to it over on G GT Live, and I am so glad that we did. The trumpets Ooh. and the happy sounds. That's blood a, falling out of the sky. That's some classic blood rain right there. And I'm not talking about that bad PS1 era <laughs> you gave about <laughs> vampire hunters. Deep cut. Spooky. Dr. Nowhere is a creator named Silas Orion, and he's another part of this incredible new wave of young artists making awesome horror content here on YouTube. Think Kane Pixels with the back rooms and unknowingly with the man in the suit. So oh yeah, so is weird. the Boiled One phenomenon? Broad strokes? It's the latest analog horror story about a mysterious broadcast that devastates a local community. And that's just the beginning. This story smashes together biblical lore with real-life events and a healthy sprinkling of the SCP Foundation on top to make a story about pain, grief, and the end of the world. In it, a horrifying red being causes full-body paralysis, forcing its victims to communicate by blinking Morse code. This one goes to some wild places, and spoiler alert, the Boiled One phenomenon is a warning about the oncoming apocalypse, complete with angels and blood and the sky opening up. But thankfully, there is hope, and we can find out how to defeat the Boiled One by looking in the most unlikely of places. Grab your pins, paper, and blue light glasses, friends, as we dive into the oh, mystery yeah, I forgot of the about Boiled the blue One light phenomenon. Glasses. So let's start out with a little recap so we know exactly what happens in this video. Thank the you. Boiled no, One I is framed it. as a VHS videotape curated by an organization known as the Afrata Branch. We're warned that the contents of the tape are known to cause severe cognitohazardous conditions. If you don't know, cognitohazards are a real thing. Information 
information that can hurt you just by you knowing it, like the dark truths of the universe or the loss meme. That means that just watching this yeah. video could be dangerous for our health. But thankfully, we're also given instructions on how the to best prevent meme. such side effects. For example, oh my God. if you begin to hear something evil or unholy speaking to you in tongues, you're instructed to plug your ears and write, I can see this paper. I can see my hand. I can't hear the screaming of thousands. I can't hear the feast. I am a moving, breathing human being on planet Earth. You know, just a normal grounding mantra. Nothing to be too concerned about. Yeah, but I mean, the fact that you need something like that kind of, it's, it's, it starts to like emphasize just how big and weird this is, could be if you need to write that down just to like, just to like ground yourself because it's like, oh! The more you think about it, the more terrifying this is. We're also instructed to recite the Bible verse Psalm 91.10, which reads, No evil shall befall you, and no plague shall come near your dwelling. But after all of that, should any memories or mental imagery of something unholy linger in your mind, contact the authorities immediately. They'll give you some amnestics, drugs meant to make you forget, which can help you appear to lead a normal life. Emphasis on up here. Up here. The yeah. long and short of this warning, if something bad happens to you here, you're never gonna recover. So that's just swell. wonderful. You're Absolutely shown footage wonderful. Footage from a local broadcast television program, a documentary centered on educational content about local woodland plant and animal life. Sadly, this documentary program was taken off of the air after the creator suddenly died in early 2001, which made it strange when an episode aired out of nowhere on August 13th, 2003. Later known as broadcast. 813, named after August 13th. I see what you did there. This particular <laughs> episode is about the poison oak. It was as beautiful as it is deceptive. However, during this broadcast, something else would hijack the program. Something with a red face that spoke to viewers over top footage of hospitals and bedrooms. And even creepier, everyone who saw this message understood it, even if they didn't speak English. This being is designated Fin228 by the Afrata branch, presumably short for Phenomenon 228. But this Jeez, is the boiled. There's 227 more things like this? Okay, yeah, so this really is like, uh, like the SC, uh, like SCP. So, what does he have to say? Garbled nonsense, of course. Yeah, Wonderful. what we're shown here is a restored recording of the event, but it's been muffled and reversed by the Afrata branch to suppress any cognito hazardous effects. But I mean, come on, you know us. Of course, we're gonna pop this in an audio editor and reverse and it to see what it actually says. Of course, Quote, I mean, you have to. The very memory of my face will cause a manifestation of my being in the future. You will be asleep in bed. I will be there and watch over you. When you wake, you will not be able to move any part of you. When the doctors eventually find you, they will not see me. But you will, and I'll see you too. Forever, I'll see you. And sure enough, it's exactly what happens. 12 yeah, days after broadcast 813, over 500 people who were watching that day suddenly fell into a pseudo coma. This is a real condition also known as locked in syndrome, during which almost all voluntary muscles in a patient's body are paralyzed except for eye movements and blinking. The person is still entirely conscious and even able to communicate with eye movements, but they can't move or speak or do anything else. And the only reason this didn't spread further is because during the broadcast, the Afrata branch disables all power grids in Pennsylvania, which resulted in the entire northeastern United States losing power. This actually coincides with a real event known as the Northeast Blackout of 2003, which stretched everywhere from New York to Michigan to Ontario and left 50 million people without power. God, yeah, I remember that. Granted, I was only a really little kid at the time. I, well, not really little. I was probably... Probably, I think, uh, 2000, yeah, 2003, I was probably eight years old at the time. But I remember we were, we went up to our trailer uh, when that happened. And, well, because there wasn't anything to do in the city, uh, like, we used the trailer as, like, a cottage up at Wasega. And, like, that drive up there, I don't think I ever saw the stars so clear. Granted, I mean, you know, the car headlights kind of spoiled it a little bit, but you know. But I, I remember, well, I mean, not, not there, but I remember hearing stories later on that there were people that legitimately thought it was the end of the world because they could see stars, which, yeah, well, I mean, in this world specifically, the world of the boiled one, yeah, I could possibly see that being true. 
but otherwise, they're stupid. In the real world, the blackout wasn't caused by some conspiracy, but instead by a combination of human error and a software bug causing a local blackout to cascade across the entire region. But in the world of the Boiled One, the Afrata branch used the blackout to collect and or delete all footage, news articles, recordings, and internet posts related to Broadcast 813. Shortly afterwards, they also set up interviews with the victims who fell into the pseudocomas, who are able to answer the questions by blinking Morse code. However, what the victims had to say was disturbing, as they described a horrific face that they kept seeing, and that they kept hearing voices and trumpets as they fell asleep. Again, exactly what the Boiled One warned us would happen in that reversed audio, and many victims were terminated as a result of the interviews. The screen then cuts to white as we see a silhouette of the Boiled One alongside the text, Wonderful Day, The Miracle of Birth, A Fetal Fanfare, and A Phrase in Japanese. We are then addressed directly by the Boiled One himself, and it's as terrifying as you might imagine. He tells us to listen closely, and that we will hear the laughter of thousands as the sky opens up, as trumpets play, as the blood of life pours down. He tells us to be still, that there will be a feast fit for a king, and that it is all melded by love. Before the video is cut off, and we are instructed to follow all of the protocols laid out to protect us at the beginning of this whole creepy thing. So, oh. I, mean, I just gotta say, the whole, like, being in the, not the pseudocoma, yeah, the pseudocoma, it's just... Oh god, I cannot imagine how terrifying that would be. I mean, just, like, not only, like, but, you know, like, the whole thing, I... I mean, I guess that's one of those things where, like, if you've never experienced it, you can't comprehend how bad it is. Because, like, I can't even imagine, you know, like, you know, thinking to do something or having wanting to do something and your body just not responding, like, in the slightest. Oh, God. Okay, that was a lot. For just 10 minutes of content, the Boiled One phenomenon is dense. What the heck even happened here? Well, a good place to start trying to resolve this mystery would be with all of its religious references. Ideas pulled from Christianity are all over the Boiled One. No, definitely, yes, we yeah. we have that Bible verse that we're meant to repeat to protect ourselves, but the documentary that the Boiled One hijacks? Poison Oak, also referred to as the Tree of Heaven. Tree of Heaven, you say? See, this is especially interesting because yeah. That's that weird. isn't actually true. Though the Tree of Heaven is a real plant, and it's part of the same family as the Poison Oak, they are different plants from entirely different parts of the world. Both make you itchy, yes, but Poison Oaks are native to North America, while the Tree of Heaven is originally from Taiwan and Northeast and Central China. Which is weird. Uh, granted, there's probably some story behind the name. Like, given that, you know, heaven was something different in, like, j uh, like ancient Japanese folklore and stuff like that. But, like, why would you call a tree that, like, that hates, that basically hates you, the tree of heaven? Like, that just, that just seems mean. Was that a mistake, or something intentional, letting Dr. Nowhere add another reference to religion here? Additionally, remember the Afrana branch, the SCP-like organization handling this situation? Well, they're also named after a real group. All the way back in 1731, what? a religious group known as the Afrata Cloister was founded in what is now Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, the same area where this series takes place. Oh, and really? another big thing that stood out to me, the repeated mention of trumpets. After the broadcast, Zamparini and the other victims heard trumpets before they fell asleep, and at the end there, the Boiled One warned us that trumpets would play their happy sounds. Oh, and also, just an amazing cherry on top here, in the real world, a mysterious glass trumpet was found buried in Afrata, Pennsylvania. Too fragile to be played by humans without damaging it, and it's the only such trumpet ever found in glass North America. Glass trumpet? Given how well it was preserved, archaeologists believe that it was buried intentionally, perhaps to hide it. But why does all of this matter? Well, trumpets have a very specific meaning in the Bible. See, in the book of Revelation, the final book in the New Testament of the Christian Bible, we're told about visions of the eventual apocalypse. In them, seven yeah. angels sound seven trumpets, with each bringing a new disaster upon the world. One of them burned a third of the planet's trees, perhaps a connection to the dangers of nature and the tree of heaven from the documentary that the Boiled One hijacked. Another would turn a third of the ocean's water into 
blood, perhaps paralleled by the boiled one saying that the blood of life will pour down upon us all. In the video, we even get some pretty gnarly imagery of the sky opening up and blood falling down. I don't know about you, but that seems pretty apocalyptic to me. Yeah, very much so. Here, he's clearly telling us that the end of the world is upon us. Which begs the question, is the boiled one a demon or is this going to be one of those weird things where it turns out that's what angels look like? Uh, now I'm missing angel hair. Uh. So is that the message here? Is the boiled one foretelling the end of the world? The trumpets have started blowing for the victims, so is the apocalypse on the horizon? That would be pretty cut and dry when it comes to an analog horror series, but that's not everything that's going on here. See, for all of the biblical language and illusions that the boiled one uses here, it's not the only thing hidden in its storyline. Close to really? the end of the video. Oh yeah, the, the Japanese text. Speaks directly to the viewer. Do you remember that weird white screen with text on top of it? The one that had that pattern? Passage in Japanese? Well, if you translate that, it reads, Fear the one and only Watanabe bird. And that's not the only place this happens. Watanabe Earlier bird? in the video, when we're told that even people who didn't speak English understood what the boiled one was saying, we see an image of an eyeball with red text reflected on it. If you reverse this text, you'll find that it's Japanese and that it reads, Afraid of birds. Now, that's a very weird, specific phrase. I knew it had to mean something, and after a bit of digging, I found that it's connected to a very real, very evil person. Mutsuhiro Watanabe was a war criminal and sergeant in the Japanese army during World War II. Specifically, he was a guard at the Omori prison camp holding allied prisoners of war, who oh, nicknamed Watanabe no. the bird thus the Watanabe bird. At Amori, Watanabe committed horrible atrocities, torturing oh, prisoners in no. his care. Believe me, you don't want to know the specifics. Despite being one of the most wanted war criminals by the Americans, Watanabe would survive the war and evade all punishment for his crimes, living out the rest of his life as an insurance salesman. He eventually died on April 1st, 2003, just a few months before the boiled one takes place in August of that same year. Clearly, what's happened here is that in this story, Watanabe died and became the Boiled One, this dark, evil entity that now physically resembles the monster he was inside. And that part isn't even speculation. Dr. Nowhere confirmed that oh. Watanabe was the inspiration for the monster, and now Watanabe is trying to use the broadcasts like the one we see in this video to continue to spread trauma and pain, just like he did during World War II. And we even get a hint at this through the nature documentary that the Boiled One hijacked. Remember Remember how it misidentified Poison Oak as the Tree of Heaven? Well, one fascinating thing about the Tree of Heaven is that it's an invasive species brought to North America from Asia, spreading oh, its roots okay. to another continent and dominating the natural plants there. That is exactly what the Boiled One is doing here, invading airways, spreading to a new land, and infesting bodies in North America. And now, that pain makes the Boiled One grow. In the very first few frames of the video, we see the monster's body stretch up into the sky, as if he's growing like a tree. That has some really dark implications, right? The more That's he's hurting weird. people, even in death as this creature, the more strength it gives him to continue doing so. It's a cycle, and perhaps that is what's leading the Boiled One to spark these apocalyptic visions. But that being said, there's another key player in this story that we haven't talked about Who? yet, and it's one that proves that the Boiled One cannot and will not win. Remember the victims of the Boiled One who could communicate through blinking Morse code. One of them yeah. is called Job Zamperini, a war vet and devout Christian who was able to connect the dots between his loss of mobility and seeing the Boiled One's face on TV, an image that has not left him since seeing it. Well, just like the Boiled One is based on Watanabe, Job Zamperini is based on other people. The first is the biblical figure Job, a good man who looks well after oh, his family, okay. but is suddenly faced by disaster after disaster, taking away everything he holds dear. Despite these hardships, Job remains faithful to God, which is great because the hardships were actually intended to be a test from God. This very right, much reflects yeah. the Job Zamperini and the Boiled One story. This is a man tormented night and day by the Boiled One. He cannot escape this awful face staring at him at all hours of the day and being told that he will never escape this fate. For the briefest moment during the interview with Job Zamperini, 
we see red morse code flash on the screen, which reads, Nobody but me and you. This is the boiled one trying to convince Zamperini that he is alone, that there is no god, and that it's just the two of them from now on. And what does Zamperini do here? Despite his paralysis, this awful situation forced upon him, he remains faithful, just like Job from the Bible. And the oh. second figure that Job is based on, it's actually a real person. One of Watanabe's prisoners, Louis Zamperini. Louis Zamperini oh. was an Olympian okay, so this uses turned soldier who fought for the United States in World War II. After his plane was shot down in the... Wait a second, I think I've heard this story before. Didn't they make a movie based on him, uh, like, uh, several years ago? Yeah, I think I remember seeing that. Oh, okay. Pacific, he was taken prisoner by the Japanese and was one of the POWs tortured by Watanabe. Thankfully, Zamperini survived confinement, but he carried the scars from Watanabe's torture, both physical and emotional, for the rest of his life. In interviews following the war, Zamperini admitted to having nightmares about his captors for years after he was released, and only really found relief when he turned to Christianity. Now, obviously, religion isn't the only way to heal heal from traumatic experiences no, like yeah, this. Of course, of this course. is just what worked for Zamperini, and it helped him let go of his pain and move on from his nightmares, to not be paralyzed by them any longer. How? Through forgiveness. That is the core message of The Boiled One. This very easily could have been a story about the cycles of pain and how you carry that with you, how it can destroy your life if you let it, how it can leave you bedridden with grief looking the monster in the face at every turn. But that doesn't have to be how you handle that pain or how you deal with the monsters that feed off of it like Watanabe and The Boiled One. The biggest weapon that the people in this world, the Afrata Branch and Joe Zamperini and all of the other victims can use against the Boiled One is forgiveness. Following his release, the real-world Louis Zamperini later returned to Japan specifically to confront his captors. He even tried to meet with Watanabe up until the day Watanabe died, but the bird avoided any and all contact with Zamperini, hoping to not be judged by America. But Zamperini mm. didn't want to hurt Watanabe or any of the others. All he wanted to do was forgive them. That is actually what Zamperini credits to making his nightmare go away. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And cut. Oh, I mean, Grant, I mean, that certainly did help me a lot in understanding it. I mean, obviously, they, he literally just explained it. But st I mean, it, it really is nice. But can you imagine that? Like a story where the apocalypse is stopped by, forgive, by forgiving the thing that's trying to cause the apocalypse. I mean, it sounds weird, but at the same time, that is, just, that is just another level of heartwarming right there. Honestly, you need more stuff in a world like that. <sighs> With all that out of the way, of course, as always, original video is linked in the description if you haven't seen it for some reason. Corner video will lead to my game theory reaction. And with that out of the way, I hope you guys liked. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you have not, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.